Hello, everybody. It's Keith. Help support the Northeast scene and declare yourself a member today. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or your podcast medium of choice. Rate us and leave a review. Every little bit helps. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It has every podcast episode plus other exclusive content. Like and leave a comment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the NE Scene. Also, continue to write us at northeastscene at gmail.com. We want to share your experiences as well. And now, here's the show. I'd, I've never been on for a, an intro before. It's weird. I'm like, am I supposed to yeah, we stay like, uh, quiet until you introduce me? Uh, yeah. Okay. A- after we introduce you, then you can start saying stuff. Cool. We like to, to keep our guests on during the intro to make them uncomfortable. Make them stressed. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Northeast Scene Podcast. This is Keith. And Tommy. What's up? We're here, we're back, and we're ready to deliver more podcast content. Yeah. I guess. Well, I don't even have anything to talk about, really, so that's <laughs> it. Uh, we'll see you in the new year. No, I'm kidding. We'll, we, we'll... We, we promise once a week, here it is. <laughs> no matter what, this is it. Now, what's going on with you? I got to know that right away. Uh, not much really. I started, uh, some training stuff at work for that leadership position, like to kind of run the middle school mathematics department kind of stuff. I hear a child. Uh, the baby is, uh, in the process of eating. She eats like, like five times a day now. Does she talk a lot? How old is she? She just... So she'll be 15 months. So she's like a little bit over a year. Um, She'll be 15 months on the, on the first of January. So she's doing a lot. She's walking a lot. Now her talking is kind of limited to a couple syllables. Like na, 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 da, 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 ma, ma, ma. And she, we, we've been, we did it with the girls too, but we use a lot of sign language when they're really young and they, they get on really fast. So she does a lot of communicating through like, uh, hand signals so she'll like uh use one that she uses it a lot now is please and help because she wants (laughs) she just uses it all like whenever she just walks up to something and she just looks up at you like please help like okay (laughs) so she has no trouble asking for help that's good no and she's really good at like it's super cute now is like uh she'll like make her way into the kitchen and it's one of those things that i just noticed like the other day she likes to play this game uh, when I get done work and I run upstairs, she runs away from me and then looks back at me to like, see I'm chasing her. So I just get down on all fours and like chase after her and hit the floor really loud. She like runs away, but we were doing it, uh, the other night and the lights in the kitchen, like the kitchen has only the one window in it. And then like the other part of the kitchen has like six windows in it. And it's when the blinds are down and it's dark outside that room, if there's no lights on, it is really dark, like really yeah. dark. She ran in there like head first, like no, like wasn't scared at all. Didn't even double back like, oh, OK, it's dark in here. I'm going to come out like just ran barreling into the dark into the darkness and was just like, I'll be OK with this. It's like, what? <laughs> what is happening right now? I don't even have my apartment dark, like completely dark when I go to sleep. Oh, really? Yeah, I leave a oh. li- I leave a light on in the living room because I'm too scared to have it completely dark. Uh, we have the blackout curtains in my room and yeah. uh, our room is like really dark at night. The only light now that we have in the room is the baby monitor. I used to sleep with the TV on. That seems insane to me now. I actually got into that habit in college. I did sleep with the TV on, but I didn't put the sound up. I would mm-hmm. just have the TV on. I would put it on mute. Like when I was watching something and I would just put it on mute and then kind of just close my eyes and then I would wake up with the TV on. I could never do that because even when my eyes are closed, I can see the light. It would drive me nuts. But I do need noise. I do need noise because I live in a a basement apartment and the ceiling is super, super thin. You know what I mean? So I can hear everything upstairs. So I I leave a fan on. 
to kind of drown out the noise. I have a fan and uh, a, like a white noise machine. Yeah, yeah. But it's like not white noise. It actually sounds like rain. Like that's the setting we use all the time. But it's like, yeah, I I just got to the point where I was just like, look, like with the TV, like it got to the point where, you know, Kelly started sleeping with the TV on and then she would sleep with it, but she wouldn't turn the sound off. And then, you know, periodically something loud would happen on TV and then wake me up and then. I would have to get up and turn it off because I couldn't find the, you know, it's pitch black. I can't find the actual remote. So I'd have to yeah. like get up, get out of bed, turn the TV off, go back to bed. Um, then we started using that sleep timer on the TV. You know, like it'll go, it just turns off automatically after a set amount of time. And then finally we just were like, just turn the lights out and go to bed. Stop. <laughs> it just, I just, it's so annoying. Like <clears throat> it's just, it's too much. Like I, there's already enough going on to add something else that I legitimately have control over. It's like, just, just don't do it. Just stop. There had to be a whole, actually that's one of the things in my relationship that was the hardest to settle on was a sleep routine. Cause I go to bed like, I don't know, three or four hours earlier than Romy does. Oh, yeah. So she would get mad that I go to sleep earlier. And I'm like, I I go to sleep when I go to sleep. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can't like stay up more. I mean, the, you know, my schedule is kind of my schedule. But and then like, I don't like to be touched at all when I'm asleep. I, mm. I'm like curled up on my side of the bed, you know, sleeping face down. Yeah, kind of like hugging a pillow. So I'm I'm just like I'm super tense because I'm like I'm always afraid I won't be able to get to sleep. So it's like I have to be in the zone to fall asleep. That yeah. sounds kind of weird, but that's like that's the case. So there was a lot of there was a lot of things to work out to get to the point where, you know, I'm over there asleep, she's watching something on the laptop with headphones, and everybody's happy. Yeah, I don't like being touched either. No, definitely not when I sleep. That actually like makes me like uh I really like I guess when I sleep, I, I'm always warm as it is not even just under the cup, like not even up, like, you know, under the blankets warm, like just normal during the day. I'm, I'm pretty a warm person yeah. and I would get in bed and Kelly would do that thing. When we first started living together, she would like kind of like curl up on my back and I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like soaking with sweat. I'm like, cause it's just her body heat trapped next to my body heat under blankets. It's like, no, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we had uh, the conclusion of our Anthony Green discussion, which oh, yeah. we talked about a little bit in the last episode. But someone posted a comment, which I thought was funny, and I want to share it. They said, you know, I love Anthony and everything he does, but he kept cutting you guys off and kept talking, which he's the guest. We came to hear the stories, but is he any better in part two? <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was funny, and we, we shared our thoughts on the episode, but here's the thing. You know, Anthony's a pro. He's, if he's entertaining and he's bringing the goods, which he did, Yeah, I'm happy. I'm perfectly fine with him talking as much as he did because he's in, in delivering all that conversation and all those stories, he's hitting my entire list of questions without me having to even ask them. Yeah. Like if he was rambling on about nothing or I don't know, like some minutia that I didn't want to hear about, I would cut him off and uh drag it back which i actually did once but you know we cut that out because we're pros <laughs> kind of right <laughs> right the shit right right the ship a little bit because but that's the thing is it's like that's anthony man like he is he is just such a good communicator and yeah. he kind of he knows where we're going with stuff i think only a couple things kind of were like oh okay like, yeah, you know, he. that's why I said he's a pro, because he, he's done tons of interviews. I think he knows the deal. Like, he knows, he would anticipate where I was going to go and jump right into the story. And I was yeah. like, all right, he's got it. Yeah, like, when you brought up the thing, like, about, like, starting to write with um, with Colin, and he was like, okay, so let me just tell the Say Ocean story. <laughs> like, yeah. Because clearly that's the trajectory of this. Let me start with the beginning and kind of get to where Colin is. Like, Yeah, I know. had this whole list of questions, like, at what point in the flight did you know you were going to bail this, that? And he he just, like, launched into the story. So I was yeah. like, all right, let me cross those off. We're good. 
<laughs> I didn't. I literally wrote like ten things down, and it, it was all like stuff like, you know, hey, remember that time we did this? Do you remember yeah. that? Time? And it, he nailed every single one of them, with the sole exception of one. And I actually brought it up to him when we were talking. He was like, "I'm so glad you didn't bring that up." And I was like, "Why?" <laughs> he's like, "Because it's just." I was like it was a story from high school and he's like, I just don't think people would want to hear that. He's like, I know you want to hear that, but like, I don't think the audience would care. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, if it's, I think I have a good sense for what people want to hear. If it's too, if it's too central to one person, I don't do it. You know what I mean? If it's like, Oh, remember when we knew this guy, like that's get, that's coming out or I'm going to redirect. Okay. Or if it's like, I don't know, someone drilling down about one very specific thing that only they, only they care about. I'm going to pull it back and, you know, send us off in a di- different direction. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, again, it's one of those things that, like, it was purely self-indulgent. And I was just like, I just want to hear him talk about this. <laughs> like, yeah. But it literally had to do with high school. And he's like, I'm glad you didn't bring that up. He's like, because we would have gone on a, a high school tangent and it just knew it never ended. I'm like, yep, I think that's a good idea. Next time we have him on, I'm just going to hit record. I'm not going to have any agenda like I did for the last episode. And I'm just going to throw random questions at him and see where it goes. I, I think that's the way to go with him because yeah. it, he is like a uh, a motor on a boat with no rudder. Like if you kind of yeah. steer him in the right direction, he will just plow right through it and just, yeah, no, I'll keep going. I got this. I got this. Like he's so good like that. And like you said, it's, he's so, you know, he, he's been through press junkets and interviews and all the other you know, stuff that he has to go through because of his career um, that he really is like, he's, he's got everything down to a science. And the cool part about that kind of like just way of thinking and the way of talking is that he doesn't filter. Like he, he said things when he said it, I was like, Oh no, (laughs) is he going to want to, is he going to want that in? Or is he going to ask afterwards to take that out? Like when he was talking about the whole thing with like, you know, getting arrested and, you know, going to jail and doing drugs in jail. And I was like, Oh, he's going to want this out. Afterwards he was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I want you to keep it all in. (laughs) I know. I loved that because those are the kind of stories I'm always looking for, but I'm afraid to ask. And he's just like, here you go. Yeah, I just am always kind of floored um, with how honest he is. He just doesn't. And I think in large part, he kind of got to the point of like, you know, like this is this is who I am. This is what's happened. Kind of take it or leave it like this is this is it. And I'm not going to sit there and, you know, try and play games or try to dance around something to make it seem, you know, less intense or uh not as bad as it was and he's just like look this is what it is take it or leave it do what i'm I'm, this is what happened so i'm gonna tell you and because he was doing that i was doing it too like i was sharing more about myself than i ever have oh yeah yeah like i have story i have stories like that too that i have not shared but maybe one day i will I think there's a couple times where I started thinking about stuff that we had, like, cause he would say a story about when we were younger and it yeah. would click something in my memory and I would go, Oh, I should bring up, you know, X. And yeah. then I, then my brain would start thinking about all the stuff that was involved in that or the lead up to it or the consequences of it. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and throw my hands up at this one. <laughs> this is, I think this is better left unsaid because, uh, you know, like you said before, we both, you know, we're both pretty corporate people. We have like regular day jobs and stuff, you know, yeah. so, uh, it, it, taking something like that and, you know, Anthony's kind of, uh, missteps or, you know, things that happen in his life that are, have been, you know, kind of crazy, uh, kind of add to the allure, like, you know, it adds yes. to the story of Anthony. Um, for us, it's like, we need to have a meeting. Yeah. We have our inter, we have our intermediary, which is the Northeast scene account between mm-hmm. us and our actual selves. So I'm, I'm conscious of that. Cause I'm afraid I, I wouldn't want, you know, I don't want my job to know everything I say on here. Oh God. No, no. Yeah. Like I, th- I think a lot of it is like, because I just come on here and I talk about things freely, you know, uh, for the most part, like I do, you know, obviously leave some things out, but, uh, you know, there's a huge part of it, like that I think when we try to 
dance around a topic. I think people can kind of pick up what we're laying down. Like, oh, yeah. okay, it can kind of like it's you know read in between the lines with certain things. Whereas, like with me, I always think about like you see those headlines of like teacher loses job because of this or teacher loses exactly. Job. I'm super conscious of that because I would be crushed if you lost your job because of some stupid thing on this podcast. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing is, is like for me, um, there's things on here that I like would just, you know, I just shy away from and I won't talk about, but like, you know, I think, I think there's other things, especially like with talking about my kids and stuff like that. I actually had a conversation this morning with one of the listeners, uh, Ed, uh, texted me and he was like, we were talking about, you know, making music again and like that kind of stuff. And he was like, you know, how old are your kids? And I was like, well, I have twins that are seven and the baby's a little bit over a year. And I said, but you know, one of the things that like I, I've been teaching my daughter how to play guitar and he was like, oh, I've been trying to teach my son, but he just really gets annoyed by it. And I was like, well, I think that's one of the things. And we found out we have something very in common. And I don't think it's just a, it's just us in common. It's just a parenting thing in general kids think when they see something on television or they see a YouTube clip of something, it's kind of like the idea. Do you remember, um, remember the episode of the Simpsons where the yo-yo people come to school and do the, uh, like, I was just going to say that before, like before you even said it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, you see it and you're like, I want to do that. And then you realize doing that takes hundreds and if not thousands of hours of practice <laughs> and dedication yes. and yes. multiple failures. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's been really difficult like my daughter's been coming to the skate park with me and she gets really frustrated because she's like i don't understand why I, I can't go as fast as everybody else and i can't jump off this or i can't go all the way up that and i'm like again because this is like you learning while you're doing this like this is not like this keep in mind think about it like this like i started skateboarding when i was seven or eight years old yeah and i'm 38 now like it's been 30 years of me doing this and certain things just came to me very easily. And then there's other tricks that I worked for months and months and months and months, and I would land two of them. And then I never went back to that trick again. And it was like, you know, what I really figured out with a lot of that was like, I spent so much time doing tricks or trying to skate like other people because I thought that's what was cool. And what I really neglected was just fucking have fun. Like it, my my kid like that's the one thing is like i I tell ellie all the time when we go to the skate park i'm like if you're not smiling while you're doing this stop doing it like yeah like when i used to do stand-up comedy it's something i always wanted to do i felt like it was my destiny and i don't know i watched a lot of stand-up and then i finally got the uh courage to i finally got the courage up to go and try it and i never liked it I never ever liked it. I I had I could only like muster up the courage to go once a week and there was mics like every night of the week and everyone would go every week and they couldn't wait to get on stage and they had friends and like would go to different mics. I never liked it. I never enjoyed it. I never did well at it and eventually I just stopped. I don't know. It's like it was like it felt like something I had to do and I don't know. It, it just it didn't feel natural. It wasn't a good fit. Yeah, so I don't know if it's like that, then you just shouldn't do it. Yeah, because I feel like there's something about like trying something where you're like working towards a goal and you're like, all right, I'm going to land this trick or I'm going to learn how to play this song, right? And then you get there and you're like, there's a sense of accomplishment. But if you're stumbling the whole way and you're really not enjoying it, like breaking it into more manageable pieces where it is enjoyable or just completely jettisoning it, just like I'm done. Like I'm going to be done with this for a little bit. I'll walk back to it in a little while and try it. I do those uh, puzzles a lot on uh, on my phone, like one of those, like, you know, they just give you like ten, like eight random letters and you have to form as many words as you possibly can. Like those I walk away from sometimes because like they'll, it's kind of set up like a crossword puzzle and I'll yeah. like, I'll be trying over and over again, like just, just different combinations of letters. Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe I, I forgot about this. And then if I close it out, don't pay attention to it occupy my brain with something else for a little bit and then come back to it nine times out of 10, like within the first 30 seconds ago. Oh, I got it. Spies. S P I E S. Yeah. Like it's just, it, it, it's just, you know, uh, I think our brains get kind of overwhelmed with things. And then if we just give ourselves a moment to kind of breathe and take a step back and take a break, uh, 
you're so much better for it. Like it, it, it works out so much better. I always do that with Call of Duty. Now I'm insanely uh, competitive but not a pro player by any means. <laughs> so I'm just disappointed a lot of the time. So I'll sign on and I'll get my ass kicked like six times in a row and just be doing horribly. And then I'm in a really pissed off mood. My palms are sweating and I'm tense. And I'm like, wait, this is, this is supposed to be what I do for fun. I'm not having fun right now. Now I'm in a bad mood. So that's when I put it down and walk away. <laughs> I think that's that's actually what made me walk away from skateboarding for so long was like uh, there were so many people doing so many different types of tricks that I didn't necessarily know how to do or I could do them but I couldn't do them well or I couldn't do them on transition or I couldn't do them into like a grind or something like that and I would just like get so frustrated with it and I would be like you know then I would go home and like watch movies like with you know skating in them and I'm like dude, these guys are so amazing. And what I really kind of lost sight of was like, the whole reason I do this is because it's fun. Like it's a fun hobby. It, it keeps me entertained. It's yeah. athletic. And like, you know, you get your heart racing. And on top of that, you kind of push yourself to do stuff that you normally wouldn't do, especially like now with the skate park. It's so much fun. It's like, I was never a skate park skater. And now I'm learning how to like just skate transition decently. And it's like, oh, this is a whole new skill set that I kind of opened up to me. And now that I've kind of gotten through some of the basics of it, it's like, it feels, it feels new and it feels fun again. And I think that's what we get bogged down in like the, 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 the banality of everything. Like, like I have to do this. I have to be able to do this trick. And you know, especially with skating with other people, you constantly get that. Like when you meet new people, Hey, can you hard flip? Hey, can you do a 360 flip? Hey, can you uh, frontside crooks? Like, uh, no, <laughs> no. I can't. Like, and it's you. You forget that like the whole reason you started doing this was because it's something that made you like feel a lot. Like it made you, it really does. It's kind of a corny kind of thing, but it makes you feel really alive. Like because you feel very much in the moment, especially when you're focused on doing something like that. Uh, all the other stuff, like I went skating on Sunday morning. It was 19 degrees outside when I woke up. I got to the skate park and somebody had only, there was only a little part of it shoveled. And I was like, I went and skated, did like 10, 15 tricks, the same one over and over again, a bunch of times. And then I was like, all right, this isn't fun anymore. And I went and I got in my car and got coffee. And it was like, there you go. that's the perfect amount. Like, it's like, if we could just kind of do that, there's obviously things in our lives that you can't do that with, like your job. You can't be like, this job's not fun anymore. Fuck this. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. No, you, bills still happen. You know, more That's some uh, Mikey Miles shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's on like a month in this job though. I actually, I, I worked with a, a girl uh, when I was younger and I remember it was uh, at the nursing home and she had come from like uh, a regular, like a chain restaurant, you know, like Perkins or something like that. And she was like, I just couldn't stand it there. It was too fast paced. I'm like, Oh, well it's kind of fast paced here too. Cause the old people are like pissed when you don't have their food out. And like, you know, you're going to have to repeat the same thing a hundred times. Like we only have four salad dressings. So you're gonna have to say it at every table to every single person multiple times. And she's like, <laughs> And I, so it's like the, you know, I always think about that in terms of like, uh, if I ever get frustrated with work, it's like, do I want to dare think about moving to another position and trying another job or, you know, moving to another district? And it's like, I'm okay with the devil I know, because I know the things that are going to be a problem here. I know how to address them. I know how to kind of sidestep things that could be issues. And as opposed to going into a completely new situation where I have to learn everything over again. Exactly. My job is going to have to fire me or lay me off if they want me gone because I love it. I've been there since 2008, various positions. Uh, I know what I'm doing. I like my coworkers. I'm growing. I'm, you know, moving into new areas. It's great. It works perfectly for me. Yeah, that's my thing is it's like, I, if I ever felt like I was stagnating, I would really feel like, you know what, maybe this is the time to go and look somewhere else. But 
um, with this new leadership position coming in and like, you know, kind of starting to oversee people. I think my biggest issue now is like, I started meeting with my principal every other week and we kind of talk about like leadership qualities and we, you know, I read case studies and stuff like that. And we talk through them. Um, but, uh, one of the things I know I'm going to struggle with is a lot of the people that I've worked with for a very long time, uh, will now suddenly go from having that relationship of like, Hey, we're both teachers and we're friends to, Hey, now I come in and observe your class once a week and I have to give you feedback on your lesson plans and give you feedback on what I saw in the classroom. Yeah. Those conversations to me are, I mean, I don't mind having them if they were somebody like, Hey, you came in to interview for the job. I love doing that. When people come in to interview and be like, Hey, could you try this next time? Or could you try that? But when it's somebody I've known for eight years and I'm like, uh, what was going on (laughs) with the class today? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like those are going to be uncomfortable. And I don't know if I'm emotionally kind of ready to be like, Hey, you that didn't go well. Like, let's talk through it. Like I, I know that that uncomfortability for me, it's the same reason I turn the office off, you know, like <laughs> when there's like that, like embarrassing, like awkwardness, I, I, I don't do well with that. And my compensation is I keep trying. I try to talk through it. Yeah. Or I just, go completely silent like i don't have I, there's no in between <laughs> yeah i used to you know did you ever watch uh curb your enthusiasm yeah i watched seasons one t- one two and most of three i used to love that show but at at one i don't know at some point i would just turning it on and and i was just like this is just people yelling at each other it's just scene after scene of people yelling at each other and it makes me very tense. And yeah. then I never watched it again. I, I don't function like that. Yeah. That, that uncomfortability makes me really, uh, it, it makes my skin crawl. And I, yeah, I, I won't watch it anymore. And there's, there was a turn in the show, like the bad things used to happen to Larry and it wasn't like really his fault. It was yeah. just bad luck. And then in later seasons, he's just an asshole. And then the fights start. <laughs> So I think that's kind of the jump the shark moment. But I'm not big on, you know, I'm just not big on comedy. You know, I won't watch any comedy. You know what I am watching, though, that I highly recommend? What's that? Mandalorian. Yeah, people were like, I saw a bunch of people like put like spoiler things out there. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't get it. So I was like, oh, I never watched that. Like, But uh, we have Disney Plus. I just, it, is it long? Like, is it going to take me a while to get caught up? Uh, there's two seasons. I think they're eight episodes each. And they're like an hour each. Yeah, yeah, or a little bit under. But I highly recommend it. Now, this is this is what they need to do with the Star Wars franchise: is keep making good new original stories, like Rogue One, like The Mandalorian, and stop with the whole Luke, Layla, you know that whole timeline. It's done to death. Let it go. The new movies were not that good. Just make new original stories that are good. And this show is excellent. That's good. I actually, uh, one of my wife's friends, and this is so funny. You know, like when somebody tells you to go watch something? Yeah, I, 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 I never do. Ever. I, ne- I, You know what, though? Um, I've been trying to be better about it. Yeah. Kelly's cousin lives up in Queens and was like, you guys are home. Like, while you're home. You should watch, um, I don't know if it's on Netflix or Hulu, but it's called Shit's Creek. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people talk about that show. So I felt bad because Kelly was like, oh, my cousin told me to watch it. And I was like, just toss an episode on. Like we were like, you know, uh, making the bed. Like we literally had just washed all the sheets and pillowcases. And we were just like, let's make the bed real quick. I was like, toss, toss it on. It's 21 minutes long. I was like, it can't be that bad. I chuckled a couple times, but it was one of those shows. As soon as I was done with the first episode, I was like, see, I could walk away from this forever and feel nothing. Like I, I, <laughs> I, 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 but when I watched, um, what was the first episode? Oh, um, I always want to call it the Royal Tenenbaums, uh, arrested development. Yeah. I, 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 I never understood that. See, I watched the first episode of that and I was like, I like this show. Like I'll watch more of this. Now yeah. 
I have not gotten into all like I've gotten through uh, when they were like, oh, we're doing a new season on Netflix. I was like, no, you're not. I'm not doing that. I'm not fucking watching that. Like <laughs> we're making a movie. I don't fuck it. Nah, yeah, good for you. I'm not doing that shit either. <laughs> like, when I was when I was home for Thanksgiving, you know, my family was like, oh, did you watch this? Did you watch that? Did you see this? Did you see this commercial? I was like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, oh, man, they probably think I'm like an asshole. Like, well, maybe I am, but I just don't watch anything. If if I was not with Romy, I would never watch any TV ever. I yeah, I the only thing I do watch and I've said this before, but the only thing I really watch uh repeatedly is that it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's the yeah. only I like us to have we watch, you know, we make dinner, we clean up, and then we watch TV until we go to sleep. So I like to have one show in the rotation, you know? Oh, but it yeah. has to be it has to be something quality and Mandalorian meets that uh quality standard for sure. I uh you know what? Kelly got me into a show. I think I mentioned this before, but I've watched a couple episodes while she's watching it and it is like it's hard to watch cuz it's really it, it's really just sad more than anything else, but it's that it's called 90 Day Fiance and it's Oh definitely, yeah. Oh. It is re- it dude, it's one of them I was watching is like, it's like heartbreaking. This like, uh, this older black lady, she's probably like in her late forties, early fifties. Um, she's been talking to this guy from England for like a long time. Thanks. You know, a year or so. Um, he, for some reason, won't ever video chat with her. Let's just put it this way. Every red flag that you would have with an online relationship that tells you you're being catfished that has come up to this woman. And yeah. she like steadfastly believes like he's a real person. I'm going to meet him. I'm getting on a plane and going to England to go meet him. And it's like his, his account gets quote unquote hacked and she gets an email that says, you know, we have compromising pictures of you. If you don't send a certain amount of money to this um, uh, email address in, in, in Bitcoin, you know, we're going to release these pictures and it could be devastating to your personal and uh, professional career and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, lady, just, just, just be okay. Just, just walk away. Just, just be done. And she plows ahead. It's fucking heartbreaking, dude. But it's also at the same time, it's like, it's like a train wreck. You just, you just can't look away. But there's also a amount of like sympathy I have where I'm like, these poor people go on these dating sites because they can't find someone locally that they connect with. And I'm like, how hard did you look? <laughs> this woman is like, for her age, she's relatively attractive. She seems very well put together. She has a, a a very nice family. Like they have a business together. It's like everything. Like in terms of like you know, could, could she go to a like a you know a meet up singles thing and meet somebody? A hundred percent. Like this woman is totally a viable candidate for someone out there, and yet she lives this weird pretend online life where she you know, dates this guy that lives in England that has a six pack. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> it's just not real. Like, I think maybe she just wants to date out of her expected, uh, pool of people. You know what yeah, I mean? I, I get that. But then, you know, join a date, like join like a, you know, like one of those meetup things where like you do it like a different thing every, like we're going to go kayaking this weekend and it's a big group date or like, we're going to learn, we're going to take billiards lessons or so, I don't know what the fuck ever you do. Like, I don't know. I haven't been on a date since I was fucking 19. So like, I, I, I wouldn't know how to do it, but like, I guess like that's the biggest driving thing is like when I, I, I'm watching it the whole time, like, I, you know, I'm not, paying a hundred percent attention. Like I'll be doing something on my phone or like, uh, putting clothes away or recently been just like, you know, wrapping presents one by one. And Kelly will like lean over and she'll like smack me hard as shit on the arm. And she'll be like, did you fucking hear that? And I'm like, what? She's like, Oh my God, I got to rewind it. And I'm like, okay. And <laughs> it'll be something that somebody said on there. And she's like, can you believe this poor guy? Can you believe this poor woman? Can you believe they said that? Can you believe they went? The one guy has been to the, he's like, Oh, I'm going to go meet my girlfriend. Um, in I, I, it's either Russia or Ukraine. I forget which one. Right. But he gets there. She stands him up. He like hires a private detective to go and find her. 
And lo and behold, they start talking to his friends at home and they're like, yeah, this hasn't worked the six other times that he's done this. And it's like, wait, hold on a second. Six times? He's been to Ukraine six times to find different girls. And they're like, oh yeah, it's just, he always just gets stood up or, you know, it, it comes out that it's a fraud. It's like, oh my God, how could you do that and be like, all right, I'm going to try this one more time. <laughs> it's weird, man. I don't get it. It's like drugs. Like, I'll just do it once more. Now that I understand. Like, it, it's so maybe like it's like that. I guess people like, I don't know. I, I didn't, I kind of gave, I don't understand that personal. Well, I used to be like that when I was young, but I gave up on dating. Like no one was interested in me. I wasn't really interested in anybody. I was le- leading a really busy life. So I thought it was just done. I yeah. was like, oh, I guess, I guess I'm too old or like, I don't know. I guess, you know how there's people who just like don't date anyone and yeah. that's it. Like I was like, oh, I guess that's going to be it for me. Okay. I actually, I thought about that and it was such an awful thing to think of, but, uh, remember when Kelly had the twins, she was in intensive care for like three weeks and I was like, oh my God, if I have to raise these fucking kids by myself, cause this lady dies on me, like I'm going to be in fucking, I'm going to be in such deep shit. Like this is going (sighs) to be a nightmare. And all my brain went to was, ew, I'd have to go on a date with somebody. And I'm like, I would just, I would be alone. I, if if I didn't have Kelly, I would 100% never, ever go. Like, I, I, I might be friendly with people. I might go out and eat dinner and, like, do all kinds of, like, you know, social aspects of life. But, like, that, like, intimate part of, like, getting to know someone and talking to them and all that, I would never do that again. Ever. Like, because I would be so concerned that it wouldn't go well. And the other thing is, is that I'm okay by myself. Like, yes, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem if my job was, I went to work all day. I came home, made dinner with the kids, hung out and played games, put them to bed, watched TV and fell asleep. Like I would be content with that. Like, and I think that like, I used to use that all the time, like with the kids, like with like, when I was talking to my girls about like, you know, going overboard with certain things, like, you know, my mom used to say it all the time, but it's like enough is a feast. And the whole idea is like, you should be content with what you have. Like if you if you're not hungry, right, then you had enough. Like this whole idea of like I need to find somebody. It's like you don't though. Like there's plenty of people that lasted th- into their seventies and eighties and nineties and were totally fine by themselves. Like my grandfather, his wife died when he was Jesus. My grandmother passed away when he was like fifty one or fifty two, and he spent the rest of his life alone. All he did was hang out with his friends, drink beers in the garage, and fucking hang out at the like you know go to the flea market and sell shit. Like that's all he did, and he was so he was the happiest person, one of the happiest people I've ever met. So yeah, it's weird because uh, there are people who they live for that. Like dating is their whole thing. They're always going on dates or looking for a date, or they enjoy dating. And I I never ever have enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Except for maybe a little, a brief period in my early to mid twenties, but I just don't, I don't know. My personality type, like opening up and getting to know someone is like scary and a chore. I'm very closed off. Yeah. And my always, my thing is, is like, you know, what if you open up to somebody and like tell them everything and like talk about your childhood and whatever. And like, and then they're just like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think we're compatible. It's like, really? I just spent all that time, effort, and all that emotion. <laughs> like, it, it, like, I almost want like a guarantee. Like, I look, if I tell you these stories, you have to hang out for a while. <laughs> like, That's our policy with our listeners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you sit here and listen to us, you got to long. You got to go to the next episode. You guys, you got to stick around with us because we're telling you shit we normally wouldn't say. Yeah, there, there's a. Uh... On the statistics for the site, it shows like viewer or listener retention. And sometimes, you know, for a couple of weeks, it'll be like 100%. And then in a couple of weeks, it'll be like zero. And I'll be like, oh, man, are we doing a bad job? <laughs> I I got so much positive feedback about the Anthony episode. It was like overwhelming. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so we're doing something right. Like, I, I, was it glassing? I think it was glassing, glassing or respire wrote like on there. This is the best episode you guys have done so far. And I was like, Oh yeah. Corey from glassing. I was like, okay, one, 
I'm a huge fan of you. And the fact that you listen to us talk is amazing. And two, like the other part of it is like, holy shit, like people really do appreciate. I, I still think it's it's kind of like absurd to me that like someone would listen to this. I had that same exact thought because I was like, Glassing is one of my favorite bands. And they're listening to what we did and saying like, this is the best of that thing you do. And I was like, that's so fucking cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's like what Anthony said, like, you know, like when you do something that other people can appreciate, like that's, even if it gets out to like 10 people and those 10 people enjoy it, it it's worth it. Like it, that, that feeling of get like, I just read that comment and like, when I read it, I was like, I got goosebumps. I was like, holy shit, dude, really? Like, yeah, I thought you it's guys true. Just, it's true. Yeah. Like in my head, I'm going like, Oh, that you know Corey came on because like we asked him to and like you know and then he was like all right I, i'm gonna go to the next podcast that talks to you know wants to talk to me like i didn't think he would ever be invested in it and it's like they're such a good band and it's so they're so awesome and it's like for them to like thinking about them sitting somewhere listening to it i'm like holy shit <laughs> like <laughs> we made something cool <laughs> like they're recording i can't wait to hear uh um, that next lp I I'm so excited for that. And it's like, uh, their drummer's birthday was just very recently. And like they, they just posted about it and I was like, Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Cause they started posting like clips of them in the studio. And I was like, fuck. That's what I said yeah. to Corey. I was like the one little clip that you guys posted on the glassing account already sounds like the best thing I've ever, ever heard. <laughs> yeah. They're so good, dude. It they, And it's like, they do such a great job of like, how do you, I, I, they, they're kind of like respire with that. Like they mix up so many different things. Cause there's a couple yeah. of like glassing stuff that like, if you took that clip out of context, you'd be like, Oh, this sounds like Caspian. Like, or if you took that clip out of context, you'd be like, uh, that sounds like Caven. Yes. Like it, there's so many different parts to it and they just blend them so well. But um, yeah, this, this thing that we do with, each other and with a guest it's like it's become something that we've talked about this before extensively but there's some days where we get on and we're like this fucking thing today you gotta be kidding me like i gotta do this today and then there's other days where you know it's just it's everything it's like what my entire day like when the 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 the, the kind of like like to half hour 45 minutes leading up to anthony's i got like nervous First, yeah. be- first, because, well, it's Anthony. And I was like, dude, he's might not show up. <laughs> like, yeah. He might just be like, fuck you guys. <laughs> or, or like, you know, I get that panicked phone call from like, you know, 10 minutes before we're supposed to be on or 10 minutes after we're supposed to be on with him being like, dude, what's, f- I don't know what says something's wrong with my browser. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think that's a huge part of this though. Like, I think that's like, Something that we come back to is that, you know, good, bad, in between, like this, this thing is just, it's so much fun. And when we get done with it, I, I know that you've, you've talked about this before, but like, it's such a relief of like another one. We just did another one. Holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's the same. I, I recognize the pattern now and I'm okay with it. I'm super nervous that the night before and the day of it's done. I go to edit it and I don't want to. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I finish editing it and then I'm really happy. And then I just have to set up all the posts over the weekend to post on Monday. And then I do it all over again. And that's going to be it. But I love it. I love it. This is it. We're not stopping. Uh, Yeah. And the other thing is like, even if we didn't have this, like you and I would still just do these things where we just talk to each other. (laughs) Cause it's so much, <laughs> it really is just so much fun. It's like, I, I've lost contact with pretty much everybody, um, over the years. Like, I mean, I don't, there's only a couple people I kind of like still, you know, through text and stuff like that, or maybe FaceTime once in a while. But, um, you know, you're the person that I've gone consistently, like, you know, since you started living with Doug, what year was that? 2007. It, like it's it's just been as soon as we reconnected it was like nothing ever changed it was like this is it yeah. like we're in a fucking just we, we'll sit around we'll make fun of stuff we'll tease each other and you know play mario kart and get drunk so you remember how we played that tool taylor swift thing <laughs> yes 
Yo, that was stuck in my head for like a week afterwards. So the the tool Taylor Swift thing inspired me. I uh, I started working on a Maynard slash tool impression. All right. Okay. I'm gonna, tr- I'm gonna debut it on the show. You tell me if it's funny. <laughs> I like to do very well. I guess this isn't very specific. I like to do very specific impressions. Like there was one. Uh, I'm like Tommy. I'm going to imitate Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs, dropping the business cards on the when, ground. Yeah, when Jodie Foster comes to the house. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "Okay," and then I did it, but it was good, right? It was dead on. Here's the thing: <laughs> it's dead on, and it's fucking so it's like his exact mannerisms like every, though even to the way like he has them dangling in between his index and middle finger for a split second and then kind of flicks them away <laughs> yeah and they all just fall down as he's putting his hands up yeah i don't i, I came up with that because i had like all these business cards i used to have all these business cards in my wallet i gotta bring that back but all right here goes <clears throat> here goes the tool impression are you ready yeah all right here we go <laughs> what do you think? Dead. Do I have something there? Yeah, there's a, there's a nugget on that. I like that. I think okay. that's the, there's like a, a a brief like when you started to I was like, where is he going with this? Like in the. <laughs> Like, are you actually going to sing? <laughs> no, that's really dead. That's good. I like that. Because he does the same thing with the perfect circle. It's the exact same thing. It's like mumbling. <laughs> a lot of, if I put that out, a lot of guys with really long goatees would go nuts for it. Oh, yeah. I, you ever notice that, like, you can kind of, when someone tells me that Tool's their favorite band, I immediately conjure an image of a specific yes. person yes like tool fans uh i'm sure range the you know like running you know from you know four foot five to seven foot eight like i'm sure they're everything in between but when you say oh, my favorite band is tool i'm going you have a receding hairline but you grow your hair long yes you wear a wool hat in the summer <laughs> you at one point in time were long jeans that weren't long enough to actually cover your ankle and you wore like stripy pull-up socks. Yeah. Uh, you have boots on currently. Uh, yeah. You may or may not paint your fingernails and you have no less than half a dozen rings on your hand. Like, Yeah, there, I, think, uh, I think of a lot of jewelry, a soul patch, a goatee, tribal tattoos, DMT... The Joe Rogan podcast, um, <laughs> Monster Energy Drink. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I always think about. Uh, it, you remember that guy, the guy who sang for Typo Negative, uh, Peter Steele. That's what yeah. I think. Of. That's like in my instant <laughs> image is like that kind of look, like, tall and gangly, very pale. He doesn't have a goatee or anything like that, but that got that goes along with it. You're definitely sh- you're you, you hit on something there. The goatee is part of that look. Yeah. So New Year's Eve is coming up. Now, New Year's Eve used to be a big deal to me because I was a heavy abuser of drugs and alcohol. And I was like, this is going to be it. It's going to be the biggest party. I'm going to have the most stuff. And it would just always end up being a disappointment, you know? And now I do nothing, and that's okay. I See, I, yeah, I was going to say we do a big thing at my – I think I sent you a bunch of text messages last year on uh... – uh, New Year's Eve. We did like uh <laughs> I called it the white trash buffet. We bought <laughs> like McDonald's chicken nuggets, um french fries from McDonald's. Like we just bought a bunch of like junky food and yeah. like Arby's roast beef sandwiches, <laughs> like a bunch of That like, sounds shit. awesome. And then we just all put it out on the table and we all just made our own plates and we watched a bunch of movies together. And then I think we watched uh like the early ball drop like because yeah. i think it happens in australia and the girls were like you know last year they were six so they were like you know nine o'clock they start fading um so we watched like one of the early ball drops in the fireworks display and uh last year it was really nice is the guy that lives across the street from me 
um, is like a real big, uh, if you're from Bucks County, he's kind of like, um, he's got a very Croydon vibe to him. Ah, uh, yeah. Tool man. Yeah. No, he's got a big, <laughs> he's got a huge goatee too. For, yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, he, uh, last year was the year that they made fireworks legal in Pennsylvania. So he must have spent like a thousand dollars on fireworks. So we just sat in, we, uh, turned the car, we turned the van around and we all sat in the back of the van and put the heat on and we watched him set off fireworks in the backyard. It was amazing. Like he had the, like really like, like the kind that like Disney world has, like he's got the fucking things in his backyard. It was incredible. And this year I was like, yo, um, are you going to do a fireworks display? And he was like, Oh no, no. And I was like, Oh, and he said it with this look of like, how, I can't believe you're asking me this. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like, uh, I bring something up. And he's like, we had a big incident here on, on, on uh 4th of July. And in my head, I'm going like 4th of July, 4th of July, 4th of July. I was down the shore. <laughs> like, so I, whatever it was, I missed it. And I guess I, I ran into his wife later and I was like, Hey, what happened on 4th of July? And she was like, oh, you didn't know. And I was like, no. And she's like, Oh, uh, one of the fireworks got in a tree and it caused a fire and the fire department had to come out and we got a big fine. And all this. I was like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but the girls were like, Hey, can we go buy fireworks? I'm like, ow, I'm buying fireworks. What am I 12? Like, get out of here. But yeah, no, my plans on New Year's Eve are always the same. Watch some movies with my kids, play around, eat garbage food. Um, and even though I'm like, you know, look, we've gone over this before in prior episodes, like I, I don't drink to excess anymore, but I do occasionally have a drink. There's Will one. You? No. And here's the only reason why nothing feels worse than waking up on new year's day with even like the slightest hint, like the hint of a hangover, because all I think about is this is the first day of the new year and you already fucked it up. <laughs> the key is to just never go to sleep. Yeah. Well, we've had that. I've had that before with you where I'm like, I'm ready to go to sleep and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I have to go to bed. I got to go lay down. You're like, you sleep in my room. <laughs> I, I would have guests over, and I'm like, yeah, just take the bedroom. I'm not going to bed. And I would sit on the couch all night playing video games. And you know what? That seems pretty crazy to me nowadays. Yeah. Like, I, I was kind of floored because I remember it being like, it was like, you know, for us, it was early. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and we'd just gotten home, and I was like, I had way too much to drink. I was like, I got to go to bed. And you were like, yeah, go to bed. Go ahead. You can take my room. I was like, really? What are you going to do? And you're like, you kind of just pointed to the table. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> like, what did I do all night? Just sit there, like, you, doing that? I was going to say, you you had your computer out and a, and a hot, like, a, I think an external hard drive. I think you were oh, watching. Yeah. Yeah. I think you were watching The Wire or you were watching the old episodes of something. I don't, I don't know, but you definitely would, like you had your hard drive connected and you were like, no, 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 I got enough here. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be busy for a while. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, good times. Well, this year I'm going to sit at a desk and play Nintendo games on my computer. Oh, you got the emulator. Yeah, I got the emulator. I got a thing so that you can connect the controller the original controller to write to the computer. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. You got an original controller. Would you get it from like eBay? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. And then you know what? I'm, it's going to be the most fun New Year's Eve I've ever had. Yeah. Do you remember the New Year's Eve that at Shaw's house where I drove everybody there? Do you remember that one? I had that. You and your ex and her friend and someone else. Yes, and then his cousin. Okay. Who okay. actually ended up becoming a police officer. And it was like very early in the night. And I remember I knew I was giving all of them a ride home. And I wasn't drinking, of course, because I was driving. And I looked over, and the person that was going to be getting in my work vehicle to take them home was already vomiting out front and i was like (laughs) it is it wasn't even close to midnight it was like 10 30 i was like 
oh my god like get me out of here like that was one of the first new year's eves that i i I spent sober and i was like you know what i think next year i'm gonna do something different (laughs) like (laughs) i'm gonna and i i had uh uh, somebody invite me to a party uh a a few years because i was with kelly at this point and they were like hey come to our new year's eve party and i was like okay and then they sent me the link and the tickets for the night for a couple was $220. And I was like, so it's $110 a person. I was like, and it was like top shelf liquor and, you know, you know, fancy hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that. And I was like looking like, okay, so what do we get to eat? There was no meal. And they're what? like, yeah, they're, they're like, yeah, but no, they hired this really, really uh, crazy DJ and he was like Who super cares? expensive. But I was like, I don't dance stupid. <laughs> like I don't, what am I going to, what am I going to do? Go in like really like, Hey, I, I paid all this money. I'm going to actually dance. No. I'm gonna, what I, a I, scam. I, yeah. I was like, I, I never, we didn't go because first of all, I, uh, $220. I balked at that immediately. Immediately. I was like, Nope, not happening. That's like poison to Tommy. Oh, you know what was really funny? Uh, we went to, well, I didn't go, but, uh, over the it's Friday the girls had off a of school. They had a half day from school this past Friday. So I watched the girls in the afternoon um, because I was done teaching and Kelly went to Costco and she came in. And the first thing she said to me, she, <laughs> she goes, here's your pants. No, she was so <laughs> excited though, because she was like, I found something for you. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then I saw it was like clothes. I was like, yes, Costco clothes. I was like, phenomenal. She's like, it's for the skate park. And I was like, all right, what is it? It was brand new. I've had the same pair of thermal underwear for, I don't know, 10 years, maybe. Ew. Yeah, it's gross. Like, well, <laughs> it, 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 they still fit and they still work, but like, um, they were like super, like they're like that neoprene kind of like really thick material. And there was a two pack of them. And I was like, how much were they? Like, of course, I, like, how much were they? She was like, uh, it's ten ninety nine. I was like, oh, oh wow! I think I got two pair, and I, I wore them to the skate park on Sunday when I went this weekend, and it was so cold, and my legs were nice and toasty and warm, and I was like, Costco comes again, bro, <laughs> coming through. That you somehow cr- always end on Costco because it's so good. It's so good. I Maybe just we'll I, get a uh, sponsorship from them. Can you imagine if no. at some point in time, like, <laughs> I love your immediacy of like, no, yeah. just. No. No, oh, it's one of my favorite places, and I, I'm really disappointed. I have not been there in a very long time because of Corona and whatnot. But um, as soon as this thing clears up and I get myself a vaccine, I'm getting my ass in there, and I'm I'm going to go pants and and flannel shopping. I support you, Tommy. <laughs> I support I, you. I, heard, I thought you were just going to be like, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to well, about. that's what I was thinking, but I, I was going the more positive route. You know what? I we should have a. A uh, segment where we just bring on Gary Shaw, and it's good. It's it's Gary and me, and we talk about the cheapskate deal of the week. And we just I, that's that's actually a great idea, but I I would be so annoyed during it. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could make it through. I I'm I'm positive if Gary's listening, Gary would go. Yeah, Costco has great stuff, dude. First, we want to say Happy New Year to everybody. This was a tough year, but we got through it. Uh, the podcast will continue indefinitely of course more great guests will be here every single week whether it's just us or another incredible guest and i'm not going to get into a whole year of the podcast thing because we're saving that for the anniversary show but i just want to say that i hope everybody's out there is doing okay that they survived 2020 that we move into a happier and healthier 2021 and uh i think that's it tommy I don't have anything. I was just, you know, happy new year to everybody. I hope you guys are all safe and uh, come and join us for the first episode of the new year. Yeah, we got a special episode planned to kick off 2021. So make sure you tune in and also shout out to our friend Chuck Moran. Uh, Tragically, he lost his mother due to complications to COVID and Chuck Moran has been a guest on our show and he does... He made our logos and our graphics. He's a good friend of ours, and uh, we hope you're doing all right, Chuck. Our condolences to you and your family. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, like with Chuck, I think the biggest thing is is like 
he's been the supporter since day one and yeah. he is, he's just such a great guy. And on top of that, um, he's been a close friend of mine, you know, for, you know, almost 20 years at this point. And, uh, I love him dearly and I really just want to make sure he's okay during this. So, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get together and we can, uh, do some type of, uh, kind of like just like ceremonial kind of thing. Just, you know, say goodbye. Uh, I've only met his mother a handful of times, but every time she was unbelievably welcoming and, and polite to us. And uh, she's always been so unbelievably supportive of Chuck and uh, everything that he does. So yeah, uh, sincerest condolences to him and his family. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll have him on soon and we won't have to, you know, talk about things that are negative. We can talk about the awesome things that are happening in his life and where his artwork is going and where it's taking him. So exactly. We love you, Chuck. All right. So everybody have a happy new year. See you in 2021. Thanks for listening. And until next time. Yeah.